doing their um, their their scale at the moment, and another concrete example that I'd like to mention is Schijvens Textiel. It's a Dutch family-owned textiles company. Um, and I often say textiles is a new plastic because it often is plastic. And they are producing 100% recycled materials for their clothing. And they are doing this in collaboration with companies in Turkey and Pakistan. So through the innovation in one small business, a family-owned business in the Netherlands, they are now transforming a global chain. And that is the kind of collaboration that we need. Uh, and I must say, coming back to what Canada said, it's mm -hmm. fantastic that in the context of this WCEF, we bring together global partners because it's only going to work if we work together. And I think it's fantastic that Canada is taking up so much, but also in Africa and Asia and Latin America, mm -hmm. things are moving. And they're moving because all of these, well, of course, politicians and people like us, but mostly those entrepreneurs are actually putting this into practice. Makes yeah. me super proud. Yeah. And you, you're so right because it is a matter of working together on a global scale. Absolutely. Two weeks mm -hmm. ago I had a meeting with uh, 20 high-ranked CEOs from Japan and the minister, your colleague yeah. uh, for the environment. Yeah. And it was all about how can we lay the right connections, what can we do more, what can we learn from each other. Yeah. And this is hopeful. Absolutely. Great. And do you see a difference in the, uh, the speed of the path between textiles and plastic? Do, or can they learn from each other? Or Absolutely. What could you I say think, about that? I think plastic... Plastic was the first time when, let's say, across the, across the globe, people started to realize we actually have a choice. We do not have to accept these, 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 these beaches littered with plastic. We can, we can decide to do it differently, and we can decide to solve this if we join forces. And I think plastic has shown us the way. And, and I think textiles can follow the path. Uh, it requires different business chains, but textiles is so much of a, of a, a chain sector that I think there is great, great potential for different textiles. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Well, um, I have a... Uh, um, a presentation. I have to. Pre I can present something uh, to you concerning plastic. Holland Circular Hotspot and uh, the Dutch Knowledge Institute TNO together have made a, a brochure, and it's called a Circular Economy for Plastics. And in it, it is it, it it sketches the challenges, but also the opportunities and the perspective. It's richly illustrated with um, uh, examples, best practices, all through the value chain and um, direct. Director Marienke Wijngaard from TNO will present it to you. So let's switch to the video. Within 25 years, 87% of plastic waste can be reusable. But only if governments, industry and consumers accelerate the circular plastic transition now. TNO designed four accelerators for this. Changing the plastic ecosystem, developing new recycling technologies, applying true costing and stimulating producer and consumer responsibility. I'm honored to present Minister van Veldhoven this brochure. It explains how the Netherlands can accelerate the circular transition. And this is the brochure mentioned. It is for you, Ms. von Veldhoven, but uh, also for you, Ms. Balken. And Ms. Brownlee, we'll see to it that you will receive it as well. Then we move to the uh, second block that is about the recommendations from the webinars. And for that, I invited the table Mr. Ruben Dubelaar and Freek van Eyck from Holland Circular Hotspot because they hosted these webinars so they can tell us what happened there. Um, but not only that, we also uh, have uh, an impression of what the participants said. <laughs> Experts from all over the world have been sharing their vision on how to scale up the transition to circular economy. Entrepreneurs show courage, are responsible for investing and scaling up, but they cannot do it alone. One of the main conditions for change is regulations and incentives. What I see is our biggest partner is government. As soon as regulation is there, yep. you see dynamics. Well, government uh, needs to either look at incentives by lowering uh, taxes or input duties to improve uh, and increase recycled uh, content. Collaboration is essential. The circular economy means creating new relationships. I think the biggest piece that brought everything together was finding a partner in a retailer that would actually push this out on a bigger scale. Innovation and innovative perspectives are essential for system change as well. But how 
do we get there? It's the need to form a new value chain and the need to collaborate differently across that value chain. I mean, Create flexibility for new technologies. Smart experimenting and move ahead, even if you need to do a step back later on. Every stakeholder has its role to play, but it takes leadership to get there. Because the consumer votes for the future they want with what they buy. But retailers need to act as the editor of the choices, edit out bad ones, and make more circular choices easy, convenient, and affordable to access. To convince the consumers to stop buying rubbish. Inclusiveness should not be overlooked. We must think of including this informal market and the, the, the most marginalized people in emerging markets, doing it fair, doing it inclusive and doing it local. Skills are also very, very important, trying to raise awareness on the circular economy in the academia world. Let's make climate impact by going circular and let's use this magic momentum that is present today. What the webinar brings us are five general recommendations, and we put them to be helpful in a, in a slide. And what we see is um, it needs a speeding up, circular economy needs regulation and incentives. It needs directives and it needs subsidies, and maybe taxes, flexible taxes, also CO2 pricing, EPR also. Collaboration, we heard it already, we talked about it already. Inclusiveness, I think, is very important. Also, to create skills to participate. Uh, knowledge and innovation, uh, DNO was um, uh, uh, also committed, but space, room for experimentation and circular business models. There we need to in in innovation. And leadership. Who is it the government that takes the lead? Is it the, uh, is it the industries? Or is it uh, someone from a knowledge or an NGO that will take the lead? So, and also, is it the manufacturer or the retailer? Questions, questions. I start with Mrs. Brownlee. Um, if you have a look at, this, uh, at these uh, recommendations, what would you think are, uh, have been very effective? And which will you stress in the next years? That is an excellent question. Thank you. Thank you very much for it. Um, and, and first, I would just say this is this is an excellent set of recommendations. Um, in Canada, we hosted in November a WCEF Plus online side event along with uh, the United Nations Environment Program and MIT Solve, and we convened 200 North American stakeholders for conversations just like this and found a very similar set of recommendations. So it's lovely to hear that there's some consistency, a large amount of alignment across uh, across these events and the conversations that are being held. And they're, they're absolutely the right set of five. Um, and I think one important um, recommendation that cuts through all of them is around a narrative, a story, and the communications of circular economy. So part of hosting the WCEF in Canada is certainly around collaboration and, and leadership on the part of the government of Canada with partners. But it's also, I think, about bringing forward the story of circular economy. Um, as was said at the outset, we don't want this to be the best kept secret anymore. We really do want this to become mainstream and a, and a solution that folks look to right away. So. Um, and I do think that communications and story element is something that comes across through all of these recommendation areas. Certainly being able to have concrete recommendations, concrete examples, pilots and case studies that we can point to and scale is very important. And another part of it is that oftentimes when we're talking about climate or its twin crisis of biodiversity loss, we're coming at something from a point of um, trying to solve a problem and coming from a need of urgency around a problem. And I think the circular economy as a tool um, can move forward our agendas on climate and biodiversity, but from a point of opportunity, it really is about what is possible, what more can we do with so many benefits to everyone who is involved in it. There's cost savings in business models and opportunities for everyone. And on that point, I think one of the key points for me is that inclusivity recommendation. So in bringing the WCEF to Canada, we're going to put specific focus on making sure we have uh, the global north and the global south represented, that we do have 
the, the countries who have made those first steps there to share their lessons learned, that we have those that are maybe one step behind, like Canada, who are there to really learn from it, and that we also bring forward the voices of youth and Indigenous peoples, because they have a, a unique perspective that can come to the conversation as well. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, maybe we lost some uh, insights uh, along our industrial way. But let's not go uh, there. Ms. Van Veldhoven, I'd like to pose the same question to you. Looking at these um, uh, uh, recommendations, what is effective and what do you think we should stress? Well, I think uh, she rightly points out the need for the, for the narrative because the story in our mind, let's say, uh, gives our heart a path to follow. And this leadership in all these elements of the sector is really what we need. If we put our mind to it, we can put a man on the moon, we can clean the beaches, and we can achieve the Paris Agreement goals. And I very much like what she said too about uh, the positive contribution. The circular economy means that you can have a more beautiful planet with better biodiversity, and also in the context with more inclusiveness, uh, and also in the context of a population, the world population that will grow to 10 billion people, there is really no alternative. So it, it really is an opportunity to provide for all of those people. And that's one of the things which I like very much about this excellent report that I was just handed over. But of course, I had the opportunity to, to take a small glance in before. There's going to be a huge growth, especially in the developing world. And so if we want to ensure the inclusiveness of this development, we're going to need a circular economy. It can help us to drive that in an eco-friendly way mm -hmm. while preserving biodiversity. I think next to CE and climate. The other big silos that we need to break apart and bring together mm -hmm. is biodiversity. I think Canada is doing a fantastic job in putting that more at the forefront of our discussions. Mm -hmm. um, so I think leadership and bringing these entire chains together. No one can create a circular economy alone. Yeah. We need each other. And if yeah. we bring those together, then we can start to make speed. And that is what we need. Thank you. But I think also the viewers and the participants on the webinars would like to hear you saying something about these incentives and directors being yes. uh, the government. Of course, so of course. The government can, has to play an important role too. We need to ensure through pricing, we need to ensure producer responsibilities, incentivize, create incentives in the system. I think we also need to, thought, especially in the global south, think about how do we involve work with the informal sector. Um, I think uh, we need, we need for example, mandatory amounts of recyclate in new products so as to create markets and then, of course, leave it up to the markets to find the best technologies to fulfill those elements. We need to take care of our global goods, so of our common society, goods. society, businesses and we government together. Absolutely. Yeah, thank absolutely. you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Balkan, we are talking about uh, the public sector here, but what can business do no. to uh, accelerate circular economy? The minister correctly pointed uh, at the uh, sustainable development goals. And number 17, I'm a big defender of the SDGs, is partnerships. And why? You cannot reach the goals without the right cooperation. That's true. And that's what mm. we need. Uh, and of course, governments have to play a role. At this moment, you have the cabinet formation in the Netherlands. So that is a moment that we can, uh, could have a bit, maybe a bit higher budget for the circular economy. I'm sure you'll use your influence. I don't be opposed. You have the <laughs> <laughs> the, you, you have the role of, uh, of the government as a launching consumer. That's an important role. You have regulation, finance, and so on. Mm. But talk about the business sector. I think it starts with rethinking and redefining your business models. You already mentioned that. You have to be creative. And it also counts for the whole value chain. Let me give an example. If you talk about plastics, the first question is, do we need plastics? Are there alternatives? The second one is, if you, if you want to use uh, plastics, make it in any case a recyclable. Think about the future. Mm. So uh, there's a matter of being very, very creative. And then the third point, that has to do with innovation. Uh, I'm really convinced that things can, uh, can, can be changed if you have the right innovative mindset. For example, the sorting techniques for plastics, that's a very complicated issue, but if you're able to change it, then you can have the changes. I think this is really uh, very, very uh, important. And I also would like to underline, we need everyone, governments, businesses, but also the world of NGOs and, uh, and universities. And the Director so General correctly said talk about young, young generation. Yeah. Yeah. If I see what's happening here in the Netherlands, a lot of universities, uh, the University of Applied Science, they all have integrated the SDGs into their curricula. So we really need also the young generation and the researchers. So, and if we would have the institutions. Yeah. That's, a, yeah, that's another that's one of the partners that we really need. Just please say that again. Financial institutions. Yeah. Financial 